We're going to talk about points, lines, and planes today. So we're going to learn about the specific language of geometry. It's like studying French or Spanish, you've got to know the language. Then we're gonna learn how to interpret diagrams, and we're gonna learn important facts about lines and planes. And these important facts, a lot of them are what we call postulates or theorems. Okay. Postulates are things that are assumed to be true, and theorems are things that can be proven. So, we're going to start with a location in space that has no size. Okay, that's called a point. Okay, and we name it just by using the letter. So, we name this as point A. Okay, you don't need to write the word point down there. You can just write the letter A. A set of points represented by a straight path that extends in two opposite directions over here is a line. Okay. We can name this line a couple different ways. This lowercase cursive letter is an L, and we can name the line as line L. Or we can use the two points, A and B, to name the line. And we have to have a little line over top of it. We can name it either AB, or we can name it BA. But again, it's got to have that little line over it that's kind of running together. So we make that little mini line that goes above it. Okay. Lastly on this, we have a part of a line that contains two endpoints and all the points in between. So that is called a line segment. We name it with the two endpoints, so we're going to use A and B again, but just the segment overneath it with no arrows. Okay, and the, or we could name it BA again with no arrows so a and b are the end points and everything in between are our points in here okay both a line and a line segment have absolutely no thickness. We also have a plane, and that plane is represented by a flat surface that extends without end and has no thickness. And we typically say, um, we use a parallelogram <clears throat> to draw out a plane and represent it. We can name it either by this capital letter M. So we say plain M. Or we can use three points. A, B, C. Or any order of A, B, C. We could do C, B, A, C, A, B, B, A, C. There's actually eight different ways that we can name this. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Last, we have a ray. A ray is a part of a line that contains an endpoint and then all of the points on one side that extends indefinitely. So here's my endpoint, and it's the part of the line that goes through point A. When you name it, you start with the endpoint and then a point that goes through it. So ray BA is the name of this. AB is a total different ray, okay? And we don't switch the side the arrows on. This is the standard way to notate it. But this is a total different ray, and it would be a ray that starts with A and goes through B. Geometry is all about interpreting diagrams 
looking at pictures, using them to prove things, using them to help you understand things. So let's look at a couple diagrams. So first, let's use this diagram to practice what we learned above. So we want to know what is another name to line, name line H. Well, here is line H. I've got two points on it, so I can name it A, B, or I could name it B, A. It doesn't matter. C, B can be named a couple different ways. We could name it B, C. We can actually name it B, D, because all we need to name a, lane, a line is two points. We can even name it D, C. Okay, just those are a couple different ways to name that. Now, Ray D, B starts here and goes through here. So it's also going to go through point C, so we can name it D, C. You have to know how to read a diagram. Okay, So we want to know what line lies in the plane. So if you look at this line here, notice that it is a solid line. Okay, So that is going to lie on the plane or in the plane. So AB is the line that lies in or on the plane. Okay. A line that goes through that, what I want you to notice is that this line here is solid here, and it extends beyond our diagram for the plane. It's dotted here. That means that it is underneath that plane. So if you think about, um, think about a piece of paper with a pencil sticking through it, this would be the part of the pencil that you could see. If you hold it a certain way, you wouldn't be able to see it underneath. And then that extends through to what you visually can see. So the line that goes through here would be line C, D, or any of the other number of ways that we look to name it. Okay. Two points in the plane would be points that are actually lying on the plane. So they're in that shaded area, they're in that parallelogram. So E would lie on the plane, A would lie on the plane, and B would lie on the plane. What I want you to notice is that F over here is not in the plane, okay? That is just another name for the plane. It's not a point because it doesn't have a point next to it. So two points not on the plane then, so nothing in that shaded area that represents a plane would be point C and D. So there's some facts about planes and they're actually postulates, things that we assume to be true. Um, I put them in less formal language so that you could help you understand. It's going to be important that you know this, <clears throat> so you might have to do a little study in. So there are an infinite number of points on any line and in any plane. You can't count them. They're just infinitely many. Two points are going to determine a line. So it doesn't matter where my two points are, okay? They determine a line, okay? One point can't determine a line. Through one point, there are infinitely number, an infinite number of lines. If I add this point over here, we actually can say that BC is also forms a line even though it's not represented by that picture, by drawing the line through it, you can still say that BC form a line by this postulate here. Okay, So any two points lie in a line, 
and we actually call them collinear. Collinear points are points that lie on the same line. Okay. Three points determine a plane. So you need at least three points to determine a plane. If I only have two, I have infinite planes. I need that third point, okay? And they actually need to be non-collinear. So all three cannot lie on the same line. So then, going the other way, any three points lie in a plane. Okay, so I can take any three points, they're going to lie in a plane. In that diagram before, we had the line going through, okay? If we have that's point A, this is point B, and this is point C, A, B, and C, even though they're not depicted as lying on a plane in the diagram, lie on that plane. So we say they're coplanar, they lie in the same plane. Okay, let's look at this diagram a little bit more. Same diagram, different things going on. I want to name three collinear points. They lie in a line. The only collinear points I have here are C, B, and D. And they lie on line C, B, C, D, however you want to name it. Okay, but they lie on a line. Three non-collinear points would be C, B, and A, we could say. Okay, so C and B lie on this line, and then A lies on this line. Okay. You could also go with, if you wanted to, A, B, so here's A and B and anything that's not on that line. So it could be E, it could be C, it could be D. Okay. Now two coplanar points leaves us open to use any points that we want. Okay? Because any two points are going to lie on a plane. So we could say C and B are coplanar. We could say um, we could say E and D are coplanar. Okay, any two points are going to be not only collinear but they're going to be coplanar. If I wanted to name three coplanar points, okay. I have to name three points that aren't on a line. So while C, B, and D absolutely lie on the same plane, okay, but uh, they're on the same line. So we probably want to name C, B, and A, So now we have one more definition, and that's an opposite ray. And those are rays with the same endpoint, but that go in a, opposite directions. Okay. So basically, opposite rays, if I have A here, or it's whiteout weekend, how about we go with PSU, okay? So, in this case, SU and SP would be opposite rays. So, in our diagram, the only thing that we could use would be BC and BD. So, they are on the same line, basically. They have the same end point, but they go in opposite directions. So, we have BC and B. D. All right, so I threw a lot at you today. There's a lot of definitions, a lot of language that you have to use the exact language. You have to use the exact notation. You might want to make index cards to help you study this so that you can cement it in your mind. 
however you like to study other subjects or like to study your foreign language would really apply here in geometry. Okay, have a math-tastic day.